Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 96. The other day, I visited someone at the hospital where I almost died. It's a big, long story, kind of traumatic, doctor error, but it put me in a really dangerous situation. And when I went to the hospital, I was thinking like, ooh, what is it going to be like to be back in that space? What am I going to experience, if anything, that might trigger the, the trauma that I experienced there? And here's kind of the interesting thing. I was okay. And I think it's because I had done a lot of work sort of processing that and a lot of appreciation that I didn't cross the rainbow bridge, as one of my friends would say, gave me a new look at going for what I really want. And it was not too long after that, things changed radically in my favor for my career Yeah, I mean, I could look at it as circumstances falling into place. That certainly plays a part. But I also know I had a new boldness and I asked for a promotion and I put myself out there in a different kind of way. Experiencing that hospital, wondering if I was going to re-experience anything there, got me to thinking about what would it be like if I visited one of those toxic workplaces. One stands out. I reported directly to the CEO. He had this habit of just calling unannounced, come on into my office, we need to talk, you know, not nothing scheduled, just impromptu kinds of things. Those meetings went from exciting because he was a new CEO and I kind of wanted to be and was told that I was going to be a right-hand person to executing a new strategy to a pit in my stomach seeing that email pop in, hey, come into my office. Because it was getting worse and worse and worse and more and more toxic to the point where I started feeling like I should be recording those meetings. Because the way I was being talked to and the way I was being treated, I had never, ever experienced anything like that in my entire career. And I wish I could say that workplaces are getting better, but they're not. I may have mentioned it on another podcast. Gallup did a state of the global workforce recently. And it's not getting better. Employees aren't any happier. They're actually less happy despite the fact that remote and hybrid and there's these other things happening and all this conversation going on in social media about employees having more leverage, but they're not happier. And a LinkedIn poll I did recently also demonstrated this. I surveyed people in a group, a group of over 2 million, with four symptoms, I guess, of toxic workplaces. They were the things that I hear frequently from clients who come to me about a career transition. There have been some pretty extreme situations, but it's, it's weird how this, how things that seem kind of minor on the surface can actually wear you down. Things like not being appreciated, micromanaging. These things just kind of are that slow boil, as I mentioned in the last episode, I think, that start to wear you down after a while and start to feel really toxic. But what was fascinating is 
out of those four things in the comments, tons of people said all of the above. And there were lots and lots of stories basically saying, that's not toxic. This is toxic. And those stories were heartbreaking, my friends. Absolutely heartbreaking. I've experienced some some pretty awful things as well. And maybe you have too. And that leads me to something I've been thinking about for months and weeks and something that I finally committed to. And that is I'm launching a new subscription membership. I'm calling it Control Your Career. Everything you need to survive and thrive in the workplace. It's launching on March 15th. That's the target date. It's going to be $20 a month. Cancel any time. That's the most flexible way to join. You can also join annually and save some money for $197 a year. But if you subscribe now in advance of the launch, for $197, I'm going to give you lifetime access and you never have to pay again. This is how important I believe it is that everybody have the skills they need, the coaching, the encouragement, the strategies they need to navigate workplace craziness. Let's just call it what it is because that's how I felt. When I was in that toxic situation with that new CEO, I was like, am I going crazy? Because I've been able to get along with anybody, always. Of course, workplaces are going to be tough sometimes. But there's always a way to at least survive and actually thrive. I wouldn't have gotten the 12 promotions I got during my career if I hadn't figured out the formula. So that's everything I'm going to pack into this membership. This is your invitation. The link to find out more is going to be in the show notes. Let's do this together. Let's change workplaces because you are changing you. Wouldn't it be so cool if the circumstances around you could be almost anything you could imagine? good, bad, indifferent, but you still had control of your career. Wow. I'm excited. What can I tell you? Now on to today's topic. Don't sweat the hard stuff. There's lots of hard things that we go through in our careers. I named a few, just the toxic environment. Sometimes it's a new challenge. Sometimes it's new knowledge uh, or you're thrown into a sink or swim kind of situation and it feels hard. But I want to talk about three aspects of this that maybe you haven't considered before. And the first one is define hard. It's our thoughts that determine our experience of easy and hard. Think about that for a minute. It could be 55 degrees outside and it's cold or it's warm. 55 degrees is just a fact. It's our thoughts about it that change our experience of it. Scientifically, I just read this, by Dr. Mark Hyman recently. Scientifically, our cells are listening to and responding to our thoughts. Is that not amazing or what? On a cellular level, our bodies are responding to what we're thinking about and it's affecting our health. So imagine what it would be like if you could think of hard things differently and just choose to think of it not as hard or at least question it. Is this hard? 
because your experience of easy and hard is in your control. Which leads me to number two. Telling yourself that something is easy isn't about minimizing it or the effort involved or the action that you'll have to take, whatever that is. That's not what it's about. Because listen, it might mean you have to jump through some hoops, do some stuff. But thinking that it's easy instead of hard is about putting yourself in a state with intentional thinking so that you can stay committed despite it being hard. Because thinking this is hard, for most people, maybe you're different, but for most people, that's not motivating. That creates a feeling of heaviness. That puts a weight on you that even though you might be determined, you're dragging something along with you that makes it harder or take longer or create some mental blocks around that thing. So deciding in advance and choose thoughts that make it feel lighter instead of heavier. Maybe the thought isn't, this is easy. Maybe it's too difficult for you to jump from this is hard to this is easy. But you can find some thoughts, some bridge thoughts, uh, a ladder between thoughts that will help you feel better, feel lighter. Maybe instead of this is hard, you could think, I might be wrong about this being hard. Open it up just a crack. Put a little bit of space in there. Maybe another thought you could consider trying on would be, this might not be as hard as I think. This might be easier than I thought. Do you see how that starts to open things up a little bit? How it starts to feel lighter? That's what you're going for. You're not going for lying to yourself. What you're going for is putting yourself in a state that will help you manage the hard thing. Stick with the action. Commit to it. No matter how hard it seems like it's going to be. And the last thing is, you can do this. Think about all the hard things you've done. You've made it to the other side of every single one. Maybe you broke through in a dramatic way. Maybe you feel like you just barely made it through. It doesn't really matter because you made it. You went from there to here. And all of those breakthroughs, all of those hard things, everything that's been accumulating is just evidence that you can do it. Give yourself credit for it. You may not ever do those hard things again, but every single one of them is evidence that you can do it. Evidence that, you know what? If you choose to look at it this way, for sure, I don't have to sweat the hard stuff. I've done it before and I've come out on the other side. If I can do it then, I can do it again. You know what really helps me with the hard stuff is finding an anthem. I love finding songs that remind me that I've got what it takes, that remind me of the attitude, the actions, and the state to be in so that I can handle the hard things that are coming along. Years ago, I was in retail and I was facing a demotion. I certainly didn't think that that was going to be the end result, but that actually was the end result. But I was fighting like crazy 
to turn business around, trying everything I possibly could, pumping up the sales team, trying different strategies, changing up the displays. I mean, I tried everything physically in my department, as well as the analytics, looking at my pricing, looking at the product I was buying and the product mix and all of that stuff and making changes and chasing trends. But it was not working. So you know what I did? I found an anthem. It was Desiree's You've Gotta Be. You've gotta be bad. You've gotta be bold. You've gotta be stronger. You've gotta be wiser. I listened to that song daily, multiple times a day, because it was my anthem for getting through and hanging in. I've had anthems like that to Seal's song Crazy and even Eminem's Lose Yourself. And I encourage you to find an anthem to. What is the thing that can remind you that you can make it? And here's the other cool thing about anthems. Sometimes when you're in the heat of the battle, it's hard to come up with thoughts that feel better. So use a song, use a quote, find the thoughts captured by someone else that you can adopt as your own. Put them on a sticky note, put them on your mirror, whatever you got to do, just so that you can remind yourself. Hard stuff ain't got nothing on you. You don't have to sweat it. All right, my friend, you've got this, and I'll talk to you again next week. If you like this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you'll find all the information you need to work with me one-on-one, as well as get access to my courses, Job Search Field Guide, and The Art of Stellar Interviews. I can't wait to help. I look forward to seeing you there.